introduces to another of our Illumination Sundays. Uh, there's one announcement before we begin. Uh, chapel next week during finals is at 10 o'clock. So each of the final days, Monday through Thursday, uh, it's a great place to come and worship and pray in the midst of finals. I did ask, and yes, there will also be chapel at 10 o'clock on Friday last week for those of you who are still working on papers. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who gave your only Son to take our human nature, and to illumine the world with your light. By your grace, adopt us as your children, and enlighten us with your Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord.
came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel. Text. 
I first looked at it, I couldn't read it until I read the book about it, and then, oh, okay, now I can see it there. It is in English, and it's from first, uh, Colossians 1. And it reads, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the first form of the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. And there you see the Incarnation fully. He was in the beginning. All things came into being through Him. But He is the head of a body. And an abstracted body is no body. But He is a real person. And we are now His body. And He makes peace a very bodily thing, the blood of the cross. In the corner of this illumination, there is a small lock. It's meant to mimic a bit the locks that were on illuminated texts uh, that kept them closed and safe in the medieval period. But it can also be seen as the place where the mystery of God and God's work in Jesus is unlocked. And that is hinted at by this illumination. Beneath the illumination and on the side of the illumination are crosses. These crosses first appear in the Gospels in the illuminations of the Transfiguration that text which pivots the story of Jesus from one who teaches and preaches and does mighty things to one who goes to Jerusalem there to die on the cross. In the upper right corner is the rest of the seminal text and lived among us. You see that text is surrounded by crosses. You see that text also displays that imprint which gives it a cosmic overtone that the other doctors sure call a spider web thing. Very technical language. <laughs> <laughs> and indeed, there's a bit of that here. But again, I would call your attention to the fact that when Jesus lived among us, he lived as a real person in a real physical place by a real lake. What's more, though, these words from John also recall the tabernacle. The King James translates that he is tabernacle among us. The Greek word means English descent. And I think if we recall the tabernacle, we get a sense of what the means. For the tabernacle was the presence of God in the center of the community. But it was also a place for God that moved with the community. Walked with them through the wilderness into the land of promise. And so it is with the Jesus who is incarnate. The word who pitched his tent among us. He is the one who walks with us in the challenging, 
frightening, real experience of life. And through this life, into the life to come. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son of God, full of grace and truth.
Lord, give me a verse. Father, this morning we pray for all those who are hurting, for those who are suffering with illness, for those who have family struggles, for those who struggle in their relationships. Father, we pray especially this morning for the family of and friends of Cheryl Schmidt who passed away this week. We ask that you would encourage them with the hope of the resurrection. Help them to know that you are in their midst. Lord, in your mercy. Father, as a bit of chaos that you built for us on campus this week during the last week of class, we ask that you would speak peace, that you would help us to know that you are in our midst as we teach, as we serve students, as we study hard and take tests. Lord, help us to do all of this to your glory and help us to know that our salvation, our relationship with you, is not based on our GPA or any test score, but you have given us peace and have given us peace with your, through your son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, into your loving hands we commend all of these prayers. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Peace, peace, God.